Welcome to Forex Concord Trading Course Part 2. First off, I wanted to introduce you to the next section that we were going to go over. It has to do with a lot of rules and setups, and I think that's one of the facts of trading that many investors fail to recognize, that you need to follow a systematic approach to the market. What prohibits us from approaching the market systematically is, for most investors, um, they just fail to apply all the lessons learned from past mistakes. And, and I think that if you ask yourself, if you've traded before, what has gone wrong and what is going to make things different? If you follow a set of rules exactly, you should see success. And that is why we talk about things such as place stops, let winners ride, cut losses early. But why do people fail to follow those simple rules? Well, the answer stems from the same elusive reason why we all as human beings have broken New Year's Eve's uh, resolutions and we've had that extra helping when we know we really shouldn't have when we're on a diet um, and, and we've never really gotten around to fixing you know something that was broken that we've had on a, on a, a wish list to do uh, it's called human nature remember in the first section we talked about human nature and that's how we get the reoccurring patterns because human nature never really changes and in my experience I've I've invariably found that the greatest obstacle one has in successful trading the biggest obstacle itself is one itself. And so there's a variety of demons that reside within each of us. And it's forcing us to keep a, what we call losing trades too long or possibly we get out of profits too early. Or maybe we're looking for advice from everyone that comes around the pike and we just fail to follow our own system. What you have in front of you in each and every one of us all have equal access to the same four elements. Those elements are the open, the high, the low, and the close. It's what we do with that information, how our minds process it, how we act on that information. That's what makes us different as traders. And in the Forex market, it's very simple. There's a value placed on a given currency and the market's going to move in a specific uh, time frame and there will be a specific move. If we understand that and if we act on a trading signal, when the trading signal is triggered, then we have a better chance of success. And if we follow that formula each and every day, then you're going to see your account build in equity. And that's really what the secret of trading is. I'm not going to teach you to abandon everything that you've learned or some of the patterns or technical analysis techniques that you've learned and have applied in the past because many of them still apply even with my methodology. We will find in this section there's patterns within patterns. Do you remember earlier we talked in the first CD about a potential rounding bottom and it sometimes turns into what what's called a cup and handle? Well we'll show you another great example of how that happens. A lot of patterns do occur within the foreign currency markets within the certain patterns that are more of my style and my style of price patterns is looking at the relationship between the open, the high, the low, and the close. So let's get started with the second session here. First off, we're going to talk about trading using candlestick charting. Now most of you may have already been familiar or introduced to candlesticks. I don't look at candlestick patterns as or use them as most traders do. In fact, I rarely use most of the patterns and trade off most of the patterns that I even wrote about in my first book, The Complete Guide to Technical Trading Tactics. And that was the book that was endorsed by a lot of great uh, famous technicians. What I use candlestick patterns for is basically to help me uncover the momentum of the market, either increasing or decreasing or looking at volume or trading activity, drying up or expanding. What that means is this, if we look at our chart to our left, we will see it is a white or hollow candle. Instantly, I can tell the difference between the high and the low in this candle. I can see the difference of what we call the shadows. And in this case, a white or hollow and in colored charts, this would be a green candle because the market's signifying that it's closing above the open, as you see here. Now, the shadows is the difference between if the market um, closes above the open, the shadow is between the low and the open, and the upper shadow would be the difference between the close and the high. So we can look at several factors. The overall length of the market, the overall length of that given trading range. We can also look at the overall range of the real body, and we can see separation between where the market closes and the actual high. That's very important, by the way, because in a true bullish market condition, we want to see the market do what? 
we want to see it close closer to the high, don't we? On our right hand side, we're looking at a chart here with the negative, or by the way, I do give assigned values of candle patterns, and, and it helps me to uncover the strength or weakness of a trend. In this example over here on our left, we look at the market close above the open. I give that a positive assigned candle because the market would be green. It's a positive assigned. It doesn't mean the market closed higher than the prior time period. It just means that it's a, a, a market closing above the open, which is a positive assigned candle. The, the chart on our right, I would assign a negative assignment because the market closes below the open. Now this is a black candle and in color charts you could obviously change it to red and you'll see that. In a downtrending market you'll see a lots of red candles signifying that the market closes below the open. And that's a very good hint or sign that there's a strong trend intact when you see lots of red candles and it's in a serious downtrend. What we're looking for is clues as to when these trend conditions change. And so identifying the real bodies and those color changes and those positive or negative assigned values can help us uh, astutely uncover when the market is going through a changing process from bearish to bullish to consolidating to trend. That's the condition we look for. Are the real bodies large? Are the real bodies small? Are the real bodies closing closer to the high or closer to the low? Is the market closing above the open or closing below the open? By candles, I can get that information almost instantaneous only by the visual aid of the colors and the shape and sizes. And that's the benefit for candle patterns. Again, we just talked about this, the relationship, which is very important between the open and the close, and we call that the real body we can immediately understand what the um, real body's color is. And in, if we're bullish, we want to see what? More green candles or more hollow candles than we do red candles or dark candles, right? We want to see more market uh, time periods closing above the open. We want to see and notice what the shadows are and the correlations of the shadows to the candle's real body. We want to see what the size of the shadows are. And again, as we talked about, the range or the length of the overall candle. So candles and, and candlestick patterns help give us immediate identification of the market's current environment and the market's participants acceptance or rejection at or near a support or resistance level. And it does so in a clear visual manner. Now, one of my favorite candles is the doji. And that happens to be this candle right here. Um, in fact, if you notice that uh, our first down candle and dojis, by the way, and the reason we have this particular chart up is that dojis sometimes incorporate two and three candle patterns. This pattern right here that we see is what's known as a morning doji star pattern. The problem is these don't traditionally show up um, as often. In fact, there's about 12 different variations. And by the time you look for that particular pattern, there's been too many trading opportunities that have passed you by. So I focus on just the doji. Now it's very clear because the doji settles between, um, and I give it in a, in a large ranged time session. Let's say you had a 40 point move. If it closes within 8% of the open, so that would be three pips in a forex move on a 40 point range. If the doji uh, forms by closing close or at the open, that's signifying that there's a significant change in the market. And I give that a neutral assignment. So our first candle here, we have a negative assigned candle because the market closes below the open. Then we have a neutral. If the market's truly bearish, it should be just be showing us negative candles, not going from negative to neutral to all of a sudden positive. So there's a change, a conditional change in the market occurring. The market closes above the open and that shows, it signifies that there is a conditional change going on. Number two, what we have with this pattern, if we focus on just the doji, is that the market closes here above the doji's high. That's very important. But as far as, and we'll get into that too in, in this course, but as far as this is concerned, the, the doji needs to close at or near the open. And like I just stated, within 8% of the overall range, if it closes back within near or at the open range, I consider that a doji. Some people would call it a, if the market doesn't close exactly at the open, especially in a, a, a smaller normal ranged session, let's say a in a given 15 minute time period, the average range is maybe 10 pips for a, a British pound or 12 pips uh, in a British pound in a given 15 minute time period. If you think about it, 
is really you know within one or two ticks some people would consider that a spinning top pattern we'll get into that as well but bottom line is it signifies the same thing that there was indecision as to which way the market is going to go for that time period and again for that time period the market closes at or near its open i consider that that psychological aspect of the market indecision that's the key element and it's not until we find a preceding candle activity whether it's a higher close or a lower close of that range that the doji's established that gives us a clue as to a shift in the momentum of the market so the doji is forewarning us of potential changes coming now the doji has several different shapes sizes and names as you see we have a normal doji we have what's called the gravestone doji and this is one that you'll find as the market closes and opens closer to the low the dragonfly as the market closes and opens closer to the high and of course a long leg or rickshaw do doji as the market has an extraordinarily long range candle it's kind of a difficult pattern to play because of the fact that it has such a long range so we need to focus on the open and close and also we need more information from prior time periods in which we will show you but these are the four basic elements of doji patterns now Doji's, the power behind them is this. They indicate indecision. They close where the market begins. Confidence is lost in an uptrend or in a downtrend. In a bullish or bearish trend, the last thing you want to see is indecision. I mean, you want to be, if you're long and the market's in an uptrend, you want to see decision by market participants who dominate bulls, who dominate the market. You want to see the market close, what, above the open? You want to see the close near the high? You want to see lots of green candles? That signifies that the, a bullish uptrend is strongly intact. All of a sudden, you start to see a doji. It starts to show indecision, and that's where you start to raise the caution flag. So doji show rejection or failure uh, of a momentum, and that's a significant sign that changes are coming. Now, doji top patterns are more reliable than doji bottoms, but personally, I find that the doji itself is the most reliable signal, and it's the preceding candle that follows the doji that really gives you the clue as to what's going on in the marketplace. One other observation is that I find that dojis form more often than not at pivot support and pivot resistance numbers. In fact, as we have already gone through an in-depth study of pivot point analysis in our first CD, the thing that you, you need to realize is that we use pivot point analysis to help us predict the actual range of the next time period. There's a large percentage of the time that the market itself, price will either hit the low or hit the high, and in a lot of times, the market will actually stay within the pivot point numbers uh, at, in a given time period range on a day, week, or month. Now, the amazing thing is we find a lot of times the low of the day or the high of the day is actually, or a 24-hour session, is defined within a, a certain time period is formed by a doji pattern. And we have some statistical studies to show you that. First off, let's talk about the doji and, and why it's important not to just rely on seeing a doji and following the rules or guidelines that others teach that say every time you see a doji it indicates a top and every time you see a doji it indicates a bottom because that's just not very good follow through advice or research number one number two i think like i stated here's a doji and notice that the market the real bodies of these following candles stay contained within the range of the doji's high and the doji's low notice that so we don't see a higher close of the doji high. We don't see a lower close until this candle. And again, that's a very bearish, ominous sign. In fact, this long red candle here, that's another one of my favorite uh, candle patterns. It's called the uh, Mirabuzo, or it's called the breakdown or blast off. And some people call it a benchmark candle. We look for the midpoint of that to act as resistance in downtrends, and we look for the midpoint to act as support in uptrends. And we're going to go through the benchmark, but I thought I'd show that for you right here, even though we're not covering that in this slide. This slide is to help represent what we see with dojis and doji bottoms and why they're not as reliable as doji tops. But friends, it's, they're not reliable by themselves. That's the key point here. Now, 
In a strong uptrend, usually the market will close near the highs larger capitalized traders hold or add to positions. That's a key word because a lot of really smart traders, they build a position. They don't just trade and then get into maybe 100 contracts. They, they build and add to that position. And so if they're trend following traders, they will continue to add until the market tells them to stop adding or until they feel that the market potential or their objective has run out. So if large capitalized traders, if they're not confident enough to add to positions or if they're getting out of positions, I think that's what happens to the market. It stops moving higher in price. And so therefore, in an uptrend, that's how a doji forms. They start buying on the open and they see that there may be something there that gives them uh, a little hesitation and they decide to get out of their positions and the market will fall right back down to where the market opens. And the opposite is true in downtrends. My favorite phrase is this, and we've all heard this from Sir Isaac Newton, a body in motion tends to stay in motion until a force or obstacle stops or changes that motion. It's the, the law of relativity. The doji represents that force. It generally stops or changes the motion or momentum of a market. And my belief is that that's when you see a doji, things are occurring. There's a change taking place. Think about it. If you're in an uptrend, you see higher close and open, higher close and open, a lot of green candles, and all of a sudden you see a neutral candle where the market closes where it, it opened. Isn't that a change? The market condition is changing. It's changed from being going up and green candles to all of a sudden a black candle because there is no body or definition when the market closes at its open. And therefore, we see that neutrality or neutral, and that indicates there's a change. And that's what the doji does. It represents that change in motion or uh, loss in momentum. So here we have one of my signature um, setups. I call it the failed doji top signal. If the market, and this is very kept critical, if the market is between pivot point resistance spots, especially on weekly and monthly numbers, if we see a, a doji top and if the market closes a Above the doji high within the next one to two candles. We want to look at going long the market on that close and we want to risk a stop close below the doji low. So this is actually a rule and it's written in your course manual. Let's go through and define exactly what this means. Now, like I just uh, went through, Several educators talk about sell every time you see a doji high, and that, that just generally is not the, the appropriate advice. I think you, you can't be rigid. You need to be flexible in your trading approach in the market. Notice here we have a, a doji top in the market. Actually, I didn't draw that uh, effectively because the market closed above that doji high here. But notice here as well, the market, we see a doji top, and what happens? We see the market close once, twice, three times above the doji high. So you need to buy on the close and risk a stop close below that doji low right there. And that's the failed doji top pattern. At the very least, if, that, if you decide that between the level of entry and the level of risk is too much for your account, then what you need to do is just at least recognize that you shouldn't be selling short and maybe look for other buying opportunities. This is a benchmark breakout candle. Notice that we'll go through this, but I thought I'd also demonstrate how powerful and how often and frequent these candles uh, form while we're, just to take the opportunity to show you now. On a benchmark candle, the midpoint should act as support all the way down to the open. So instead of buying the breakout and getting scared out down here, look for the pullback to the midpoint and you place a stop below the open of the benchmark candle on what's called a stop close only order. A stop, close only order. The failed doji top, we're looking for a higher close than the doji's high. We are now, as you see here, and again, we're looking to place a stop, close only, below the doji's low. We should see immediate results. Here we have immediate results. What happens though? The market forms another doji. A little scary, agreed. However, we see positive assigned value. We see an inside day and then the market blasts off. So this is a very nice continuation pattern. And so the veil, failed doji top is a very powerful indication. Now back here, remember I showed you the market, here's the high. Subtle changes do occur. The market does close above the doji high, as you see right here. So watching and following dojis is a very important element. 
Here again, another failed doji top signal. Where the market in an uptrend, as you see, this is an uptrend, in an uptrend, all of a sudden you would imagine or you would think that with a doji, imagine that the market is going to top out. But again, as you see with these green lines, that represents the actual range of the doji. Notice that the range of the doji contains the real bodies. More importantly, that's the range or where the market closes. The market is closing, think about this, the market is closing still unchanged. It's a consolidation pattern. This almost represents what? A bull flag. And look what happens, the market takes off. In fact, here's another failed doji top there and the market keeps going. What is the neat thing about this? The market closes above the doji high, as you see here, all right? And then here's another one where the market closes above the doji high. And in here, the market closes below the doji low. So paying attention to where the market closes in relationship to the doji's high and the doji's low, that's what's gonna help you to determine when to stay with a trade, when to get out of a trade, and also when to add on to positions. It's very important. So having a high close or a failed doji pattern, a high close over a doji after an uptrend, most times does not signal that the market is close to an end. In fact, a failed doji top can also be one of the most powerful lucrative trading signals that you will notice when using foreign currency in the Forex markets. Now, more rules to follow here. The second candle after the doji that makes a higher closing high, that triggers the buy. So it's the high close above the doji that really defines the breakout, remember that. And you can go back to this course and review this. Let's go back and look at this a little bit more in depth, shall we? Now notice here where I've already drawn, here's the high of the doji, here we have a low close doji. The market, our first high close doji, which we haven't gone into yet in the course, but we're going to, because that is really my signature setup and that's the money maker, one of the top money makers. These are the patterns that I'm looking at. I'm not looking at your traditional inverted head and shoulders or head and shoulders top or looking at pennants and flags and, and, and whatnot. I'm looking at the, the relationship of the formations of the market where it closes in relationship to certain candle patterns. Notice here that we see the market has a high close doji right here. The market takes off, we see a doji, and again, we see a low close doji. That should signal that the market's gonna continue lower, and it doesn't. Well, what happens? The market reverses back again, closes back above a doji high, and see what we see happening? The market continues higher. We see at any one point in time, the market never takes out the low of these dojis. Never takes the low of that doji out, never takes the low of that doji out on a closing basis. And every time we see the market close above a doji high, look what happens. We see perfect analysis, immediate results follow. And that's what you want to see. If you see a pattern and you say to yourself, boy, I've seen that pattern before and these are what, this is the, the outcome. Generally within one or two candles later, we see immediate results. And if that's the case, then go with that trade. So how do you trade it though? Well, how do you trade it means, when do you get in, where's your risk, how long do you stay in the trade for? On a high failed doji top, you're looking for the market to close above the doji, you're looking to get in on the close or the open in the next session, and you have to risk a stop close only below the doji low. Because you don't want to be a hammer formation, which this is right here, get stopped out of the game, and then watch the market take off without you. That's why it's imperative to use stop close onlys. Now, let's define a stop close only right now before we go any further. Most intraday trading platforms do not accept a stop close only. That means on a five minute, a 15, a 60 minute, they don't take stop close onlys. So as a day trader, it's up to you to watch and follow the market at the end of whatever time period you're trading in is. For example, if you're trading in a five minute and every five minutes, such as if you get a signal at 11 o'clock and at 11.03 you think you're in trouble, you have to wait until 11.05. That's the end of that five minute time period. And 11.15, so if your time frame of five minute begins on the hour, every five minutes after that, that's when you have to wait for to trigger a signal. Every form of market analysis, every single form of market analysis 
works the same way. You will not get a stochastic signal until the end of the five minute period locks in and the signal closes. So it needs to wait for the market signals. Because after all, think about this. In a five minute time frame, this doji right here probably had a red candle because it established a low, but then boop, came right back and closed on the open. So you have to wait for the close. And so that means if you're in a five minute, you have to wait for five minute. You're in a 15, wait for a 15. 60, wait for the 60 minute period to conclude before you make a trade decision, either on an entry or an exit. And therefore, if you have one of these signals, you can then determine whether you wanna place an order as a, to get into the market based on one of these patterns and how to place your stop. You may not feel the risk is worth the reward. And if that's the case, Maybe you should scale down your position size instead of going all in. If you are a 10 lot trader, scale it down to four lots. Therefore, that's one of the, the things about being flexible. You see a pattern, it's a high probability trade, but the risk may be too great. Scale down your position. Stop close onlys are one of the most fabulous ways of trading in the market. It is an official stop. It's a mental stop close only on an intraday basis. The problem with that type of order is that you, the trader, need to take responsibility and when the signal says get out, get out. Now, most people don't have that ability yet, so you have to develop it, you have to learn that, you have to get that trait in you, and you can, that's the good news. So stop close onlys on an intraday basis, believe me. They're the most effective stop measurements. If you think about this, a lot of people say, well, John, if I place the stop close only and if the market crashes, golly gee willikers, I'm going to just get annihilated. Well, if you had a stop in there anyway, let's say, if you had a stop right here, do you think you're getting filled here or do you think you're getting filled on the very low anyway? You're getting filled very on the low anyway. So why not wait till the period concludes? If the market bounces all the way back up, the market doesn't close below your low, you're still in the game. So remember, if the risk isn't worth the reward and it is a high probability setup, possibly scale back the amount of contract lot sizes that you're trading in. Failed doji top. One more example. Notice again that the range of the doji will contain the real bodies until we see a close above the doji high and that's showing you a continuation of the trend and a breakout momentum to the upside. Now, if you bought here on the close or the open, you're in on a Euro currency, spot Forex, as you can see here. On a spot Forex, you're in on this particular trade around 128.21, and this is on a 15-minute chart, as you see right here. Look at this, one, two, three, one hour later, you're up a, a small amount, but you, you know, you're up almost, what, 22 pips on a trade with no heat, no pressure, nothing to worry about. And then, therefore, as the market really starts to rock and roll, you know, you can then therefore decide whether you want to stay with this trade, scale out of the trade, take partial positions, or move your stop up to break even. My favorite is to scale out of partial positions as we start to demonstrate weakness or loss of momentum. And what's loss of momentum in this trade? Notice the shadows. The market fails to start, to, it actually stops closing closer to the high, and we see these long shadows. That's not a very good sign if the market's going to remain bullish. So I would probably scale out of half my positions at this point and move my stop to break even on the balance. That way I've generated cash equity in my account and I'm still able to participate in the trade. And that is following through with a trading plan and a trading program. Now, let's talk about one of the more reliable, highly effective, and probably the single most pattern lucrative pattern that I look for and trade off of on a daily basis. I call it the high close doji. And that stands for HCD, stands for high close doji. I keep things really, really simple. In fact, since on if pivot point analysis and near pivot supports, we see dojis form more often than not, the key is why would I look for a morning doji star? Because that particular pattern may not develop, but we may see dojis form. And so therefore, that's how I came to this pattern and identified this pattern over five years ago. So in, in fact, it was around um, 
actually it was a little bit longer than that. It was like six years ago, back in 2000. I noticed that the candle patterns and I saw these pivot points. Now keep in mind, I've been using pivot point analysis for close to 30 years. Um, and so candles really came on the scene um, with Steve Nissen introducing them to the world back in the uh, uh, early 90s. And so it took time for me to really adjust to following the candle patterns and they were great. But then I noticed in several markets that we would see dojis at pivots and it developed into this kind of a, a, a bizarre coincidence. And it turned out it wasn't really a coincidence. It just so happens that every time the market was in a downtrend and it came close to pivot support, we'd see a doji, that indecision. It was showing there was a change in the momentum of the market. And then as far as short-term trading, I noticed for momentum shifts that when the market closed above a doji high, wow, the market would take off. And so therefore I was able to develop this particular pattern. This is actually something that was um, truly out of uh, my observation of trading in the market. And one of the things, like I say, you know, this is some of the patterns that I have uh, developed and learned. It's taken me literally close to 36,000 hours, 36,000 hours estimated of, of looking at charts and staring at the markets on an eight hour basis uh, for the last 27 years. So with that said, the bullish trade setup, the high close doji, we're looking to buy on the close or the next open after a new closing high is made from a previous bullish candle pattern, especially if it's a doji, and if we are against a key pivot point or Fibonacci target support number. Now I put in the Fibonacci target support number because a lot of times the, we will see a coinciding, corroborating Fibonacci number alongside a pivot point. That's why I use pivot points more often than I use Fibonacci because it's redundancy and pivot point analysis is more effective because it combines both time and price. And as traders, that's what we need. We need to know where the market is going to be in a specific time frame, And then it's up to us to identify what the change in momentum is. And that's what the high closed OG is. It identifies that change in momentum. Now, how do we place our stops? What's our risk factor? Real simple. We place stops below the lowest low of the initial bullish candle. In that case, it should be the doji. And that stop should be, again, a stop close only on an interday basis. You're going to have to use a mental stop close only. You want to sell or exit the trade on the close or the next open of a candle once we see a lower closing low, and especially if we're near an important key pivot point target number. Now you can use a filter or a backup process to confirm the buy signal, such as a bullish convergence stochastics pattern or a MACD pattern, uh, such as a hook cross or a zero line cross on MACD. But overall, here's what the high close doji generally looks like. This is a Euro currency. And as you can see from the prices, this is not recent. But again, we're gonna show more recent charts and we're gonna identify how the pattern occurs over and over and over again. We see a doji. We're at, you can't see the blue line, just underneath it at 132.87. We have uh, right underneath this line is our pivot support. And as the market got close to the pivot support, we saw a doji. We saw the market close above the doji high. In fact, we see another doji. We see what? Another higher closing high over the doji high and the market trails off. In fact, you think the top is in. Here's a, an additional confirmation of a failed doji top. Now this is not a, a very small time frame. This is again a 15 minute time period. So this is not something that if you used a one minute chart, you'd see dojis almost every, uh, every candle. I use a 15 and a five for my trading. And I think the 15 is the most reliable time period because it allows market to participants that gives them at least that 15 minutes. It's a quarter of an hour. Um, it is one fourth of a full hour of trading for the market to digest and create a range. And that is important. So that's why I personally follow the 15 minute candle patterns. But in this case, high close doji, we're looking for a close above the doji to signify the change in momentum in the market. So let's identify high close doji. We have doji here. We have doji here. We're looking for the market to close above the doji high and see that we have the highest high of the doji. We want to see the market close above that level in order to trigger and signify a market move. Now we have another doji here. So notice that the market doesn't close above the doji high. It closes on the high. That's not good enough for me. I want to see confirmed evidence 
that there's a shift in momentum and that the market stayed and sustained a price breakout. And it won't do it by just trading above a doji high, because notice we have that here. It doesn't sustain and accept and lock in a higher price. It fails and comes back. How many people would be just chopped up alive in that type of environment? The key is to wait for the market to close, lock, and assign a higher closing value. And then, based on that, we want to buy on the close or the open in the next time period. We use our last doji, our last doji's low, as our risk factor. We want to place a stop, friends, right as a stop close only there. Now, in this particular example, we'd be getting in on the open right here of this candle right there. We're going to place a stop right here. So let's review. That's 133.57. We're in at 133.65. We're not dealing with a lot of risk, are we? We're not dealing with a lot of risk at all. Now we're in. We want to see immediate results. The market closes higher. Next candle. We don't see immediate risk, uh, at least immediate results. We still have a risk in the trade because but you know what? Notice something. We're in from here. It's still higher assigned value. Even though we have a red candle, what do we notice about that red candle? Well, let's examine. We have a higher high, correct, from here. We have higher highs, correct. We have a higher low, correct. And so remember we, we identified a trend, and isn't that what we want to see? Higher highs, higher lows, and then we want to see what? Higher closing highs. Incidentally, isn't that what we have right there? Higher closing highs. Now this trade we're in at 133.65. Notice that within, and this is a five minute candle. So notice that 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, a half hour later, we're up a nice 24, uh, 20 pips at least. So a nice little sweet breakout trade without taking any heat whatsoever. So I've got news for you. I think if you follow these types of patterns, and you, you follow the rules because they're very hard not to follow. You buy on, you have to wait for the close and then buy on the on that closing time period or of course the open of the next session. It's pretty much one and the same. Place your stops below the doji low on a stop close only basis. Let's take a look at this. This is more recent history of course with the Genesis platform and with our indicators. Now, neat thing about this is that a lot of people like to take sell signals and they think as they get close to a um, support, and that's what this line is. This is your pivot point support. And they want to start looking at sell signals at support. Wouldn't it be more fruitful to look for maybe buy signals at support? Take buy signals at support? How about looking for a high close doji? Doji's form at or near the low of the session, more times than not. Doji's form more often than not than they do at pivot points. And here we have, this is March 3rd of 2006. So again, we're showing you charts from uh, years past, months past, weeks past, and of course, um, right now is a more recent history. Here's a great trade and a perfect setup as we see the market take off in a high close Doji fashion. We have our moving average components. The market closes what? Above the Doji high, above the moving averages, and the market closes above both moving average values. What do we see in Sue? Higher highs, higher lows, and the market takes off. And until we start to look at, as we're near the pivot point support or resistance, as we're near pivot resistance, notice what we have here, another doji. So we're starting to see signs that this market trend may weaken. And so here's what we want to do. At this point, you see a market making a lower closing low. What do we want to do? Scale out of partial positions. I would personally be scaling out of half my position. That means from here to here, I took a nice chunk of the middle out of this trade. And that's very respectful. I can at least now move my stops to break even on the balance and let the trade ride. As we start to see the market though, hit its maximum pivot point resistance level, we can probably accept the fact that that's going to be about the end of the run for the day. And therefore, we want to start getting out of the trade. It's always best to get out on the highs than it is on the lows when you're balancing out your positions. Remember, we talked about identifying who you are and what you are as a trader. If you're a day trader and you're not going to hold this overnight, if you're not going to hold this into the next day or next 24 hour period with the Forex, then do yourself a favor and capture a profit because on one full size contract, that's a nice $630 gain, total profit on a single lot right here, 630. 
So that's how you effectively would look for a trading pattern. That would be what you're looking for in a trade and how you effectively manage that trade. Let's take an example here. Um, the prior example was a, a British pound. This is a euro currency. Let's take a look at this. Also, notice that we have the doji patterns forming. Notice that we have our pivot point support. We have our pivot point resistance. We have our Genesis software indicating buy signals, that there's strong momentum, that there's big demand under the market. And that's the neat thing about this. Notice here we have a major crossover to the downside. Once again, even using this type of methodology where we're using the market's momentum in our favor, buying high close doji signals, as you see here, buying on strength as against the pivot support and risking closes, even if you got out of, as you start to see the market turn against you, even if you got out of half your positions and let your balance ride at break even, you're still in a position. But more importantly, you get another opportunity to see the high closed doji as it's disguised over here. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for that doji. And we're looking for what? We're looking for a high closed doji, which we have on this green candle right here. And we want to see immediate results ensue. Our risk is here. Our buy point's there. We're not talking a whole lot of money here as far as a risk factor. We're talking about uh, 10 to 12 pips. And look at that beautiful breakout run. Now, I also want to point out here that, as I mentioned before, I don't want you to abandon your prior knowledge of market analysis. Remember, here we have a rounding bottom, a cup pattern, a cup and handle pattern. That's what's really called a cup and handle. And it's a very bullish pattern. We see a lot of that pattern form in the Forex. Here's what it really relates to. And we'll talk about the psychology of the cup and handle pattern. The market is in a rounding bottom. It breaks out. And then market tries to come back and test the lows. It's almost like a one, two, three bottom. But we see that rounding bottom pattern. And then we see a little bit more consolidation before the market takes off. But notice that we have that doji right here, that high close doji. More importantly, let's take a look at what we've gone over using moving average approach. The market closes above the doji high, closes back above both moving average values, the pivot point and the three period pivot point moving average. And we see this market take off. Now this moving average that you see here is a variation of what we teach in our course. And I don't give out this proprietary signal and setups in this system. But it works very much similar to what we've been taught so far in your trading course. Now, let's go over the bearish trade signal, the low close doji. Now, this is pretty simple stuff. Um, you want to focus on the doji when it's forming at support, and you want to focus on the doji when it's at resistance. You can certainly signify and look for signals and alerts for when a doji happens within certain percentage of, uh, such as a certain percentage of the range within the, the pivot point low. And you, want to, you can also signal an alert that if a doji forms near a certain percentage of an average daily range near resistance. And that will heighten your awareness to when the next trading opportunity takes place. So if you can do that, great. If not, this Genesis product is just phenomenal for an additional plug-in feature that will highlight the arrows when there are sell signals and shifts in momentum that alert you to these changes. The bearish trade setup, what we call the low close doji, that's the LCD. That's not a projector, it's an LCD, stands for low close doji. It's just the opposite of the high close doji. We're looking to sell on the close of the next open when a new lower closing low is made from a previous time period's bearish candle or doji against a pivot or again, a Fibonacci resistance number. Most importantly, we're gonna see it against the pivot resistance numbers. You want to place a stop above the highest high point of the initial bearish candle, which in this case is the doji. And these should be initially placed as stop close only. I say initially because you just don't leave it there all the time. Initially is you place it there as a stop close only because you don't want the market to go back, re-challenge the high, stop you out, and then crash right back down. Because we've seen that where the market may form a doji, and then the next candle or two after that, after you're in, forms what's called a shooting star. And all that is is a seek and destroy candle, goes up, hits your stop, and then just drops like a rock without you. That's why it's important to initially use 
a stop close only for that interval. If you feel the risk is too great for that particular trade, then scale back your contract or lot sizes. That's a very neat and important feature. Now, you want to buy or exit on the open of the first candle after the previous candle makes a higher closing high than the previous candle. In other words, if the market's in a downtrend and you're short and all of a sudden you see lower uh, lows, lower highs, and lower closing lows, and then the first time we see a higher closing high, get out of your position, at least bail out of half your position, place your stops now to a break even. So you go from initially a stop close only, then you can change that as the market's improving itself to, to a hard stop, and then you can start to scale out, taking money off the table and placing a break even stop. And we'll teach you a little bit about trailing stops in this course as well. So you can also, to encourage and facilitate confirmation of a low closed OG signal, you can also use a filters such as a bearish divergence stochastics pattern and or MACD study. Once again, very simple stuff. Notice that we do not see, we see for those uh, candle chart aficionados, we have what's called a hanging man right here, followed by a doji, then another doji. Notice that the market goes up, probably hit a lot of stops. The prior high here was knocked out. Someone got stopped out and we have a low closed doji trigger. At this point, we're sitting here trading at 130.53. Now our risk is up here at 130.70 on a stop close only. At this point, you may say to yourself, that must be too much risk for me for too many positions. Then scale back your positions. If you're a five lot trader, move it down to a two lot, but at least you'll capture a portion of a trade signal without missing an opportunity. Now, I would gather to say with this high and when that high, just based on the relative uh, formula of stochastics, which we will get into, that this was forming a bearish divergence pattern because the market did what? It made a higher high, but failed to maintain and sustain that high, and it closed closer to the low. It closed below the prior time period's highs as well. And then, of course, we see negative momentum by a lower closing low than the doji. That's your trigger to go short the market. Here's another example of the low close doji, especially using our stochastics. Notice here we have the doji. We have a low close doji. The market, the very next candle does not close below the doji low, but it does so here. Notice that our Genesis software package triggers a sell for us. So we're alerted by a orange arrow pointing down that we have a sell signal. We identify the doji. We see the market looking at closing below both moving average crossovers. We see the market closing below of course, the moving average is on top of it, and we have a beautiful setup and a sell signal all the way down. This is a nice scalp for short-term traders. This is the kind of trade we look for. Now again, these patterns reoccur frequently all the time. The key is we don't know what the end result will be. I don't know if, for example, this is a euro currency. I don't know if this is going to be from 119.40 fall all the way down to 119, 118.92. I mean, obviously we, we have a 48 pip drop and this is based on 20 minutes. So uh, we have what, from the, the close to the open, one, two, three, four, five, right? 100 minutes, six, 120 minutes. We have to stay in that trade for over two hours as we enter near our pivot support. Here we have a higher close. That's where we wanna start exiting our trades. Or again, as we get closer to our pivot support. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about yet is stochastics. And, but I did say how you can utilize stochastics or MACD to help confirm these signals. Notice that the stochastics has a nice hook cross signal below the 80% line and confirms that there's a shift in momentum weakness. That is a beautiful setup and a perfect textbook uh, trigger to go short a market. Your risk from the point of entry, which is either on the close or the open, which is at 119.50, we're risking a stop close only over 119.75. So that's literally 25 pip risk. And so we wanna have at least a two to three to one risk reward ratio. And by the way, that's exactly what we have here, about 50 pips to the downside, risking 25. Now the, the key is when I talk about initially, initially a stop close only, let's define initially. As soon as I get into the trade, I want to make sure that if it's not the next 
time period, by this close or the next close, I need to see immediate results. The further the market moves from my initial entry, which is right here, I can change that from a stop close only, and now I can change it to a hard stop, a regular stop. Change it to a regular stop, okay? Instead of a stop close only order. We initially place it as a stop close only. As the market starts to prove and decline in our favor, we move that from a regular stop to a stop close only. Now we can start looking at what? Moving our stop down to break even. As we start to see the market do what? Perform quite nicely for us. If you're short, what do we want to see? We want to see the market close below the open. We want to see red candles, correct? And that's what we see here. Those would be negative assigned candle. What's this? A green candle. That's showing us that there's a shift in momentum, that the negative momentum is starting to wane. We're starting to see a conditional change in the market and it's time to possibly tighten stops, scale out of half your position. By the way, if you notice that this candle right here, this red candle is the last conditional change candle. I say con last conditional change candle because notice where it closed and notice where it closed in relationship to the prior low. That's the last time the market made a lower closing low. So what I would do at this point in time is I'd be looking to capture a portion of profits on my position and I would place a stop above that high and let it ride. Now I'm going to be sitting in this trade for an awful long time because I'm not going to get stopped out to about right here or here. Okay, But I can definitely say that as we're close to support, as we're close to these supports, these are the support targets, as I'm showing you. As we're close to these supports, I can make a determination whether I want to stay with the trade, cut the entire position out, and walk away a winner. That's how you look for a trade signal. That's how you enter the sell signal. That's how you get on the market. That's how you place your risk, and that's how you manage your trade. And that's what a professional does to take money out of the market each and every day. And so if that doesn't seem that hard for you to do, then welcome aboard because I think this is going to be probably the best way that you're going to capture short-term trades. As a Forex trader, just by the very nature of the fact that you're trading foreign currency markets, you are a short-term trader. You're not looking to determine and be right or become an economist as to where the euro currency is going. You're looking to add money in your account and you're looking to do so with a certain degree of risk with the expectations of being rewarded if you're right. That's how you manage a trade. Now, we've gone through some of my signature phrase uh, patterns. I want to show you some top reversal patterns, some that have a lot of relevancy. We've listed them in your trading course book. However, let's go over a few. Remember, we talked about the evening doji star. However, the evening doji star has about 12 variations. It's really easy to see the doji. It's really easy to see the market close below the doji low. That's what I'm targeting. That's what I'm focusing on. In the examples that we showed, both low close doji and high close doji, we never did see an official evening doji star pattern. And when we were at pivot support, we never really saw the official morning doji star pattern, did we? So therefore, if you're focusing on those two patterns, if you studied, if you got the rule book out, if you look at the chart patterns, you're going to have a hard time identifying those. And you're going to see a lot of different trading opportunities pass you by. By the way, we have the Harami uh, Doji Cross. Again, very important. It's a bullish or excuse me, bearish um, sign when the market after a rally, as this is a white candle, after a long rally and we see a Doji within the real body, this market is indicating a change in the momentum. It's a very ominous sign. But again, I need to see more evidence as to the determine whether the market is going to truly go down, whether this is just a sideways or a pause, if the market's going to resume the uptrend. So therefore, when I see dojis, I need to see where the market closes in relationship to its low or in relationship to its high. There's of course the bearish engulfing pattern. There's the dark cloud pattern. There's the bullish engulfing pattern. Both the engulfing patterns also resemble what we're going to go over in uh, this course is the benchmark, which is a little bit more powerful. And I gave you already an introduction to the benchmark and how to handle that trade. In a bullish engulfing pattern or a benchmark or marabuzo, we're looking to buy the midpoint of a pullback of that candle. In this whole scheme that we're seeing, 
These are the most important patterns that we look for, but I'm teaching you some of the more important variations. Two patterns that we want to introduce you to. One is called the hammer, which is right here, and the inversion of that hammer, and that would be if the real body would be at the bottom and we'd have a very tall spike top, we would be calling that a shooting star. Very important between the hammer and the shooting star. Hammers are a characteristic that form at bottoms. They are just as powerful as identifying reversals as dojis, by the way. And so therefore, I think it's important to give a lot of respect to the hammer and talk about it in this course. First off, the characteristics required to form a hammer candlestick is that the lower shadow should be at least two times the length of the real body. There should be little to no upper shadow. Now with Forex, it's very difficult on this because of the bid and the ask, there may be a shadow, but depending on your Forex platform or at least the Forex dealer that you go through because of the you know, within Forex, sometimes there's a three pip, two pip, four pip spread and the bid and the ask, that candle pattern might not show up on one platform where it will on other uh, companies' platforms. So, you know, you have to have a little bit of gray matter there in some of these patterns. And that's why I like the 15 minute time period because in 15 minutes, it's really not something that's going to be, you know, uh, it, it has a lot of time to digest the whole price range and therefore, I think a shorter time period, like a five minute, hammers probably don't have enough A, time to develop, and B, there's not enough price action, uh, volatility, or market participants in that five minutes to really make a true hammer form because of the Forex bid and ask um, method or system of trading. So in any event, let's not be too rigid if, if the psychology of the market is that if it's at a bottom and you see a long shadow in a real body and it's close at least the real body is close to the high. There might be a little shadow, a few pips or so, above the real body. So that is acceptable in identifying a hammer bottom. Now I believe in a hammer bottom, a white or green hollow body is a little bit more of a stronger, reliable indication that the bottom has actually formed. And what that means is that the market has closed above the open, right? A green candle means the market closed above the open. Now, there's an example, and I love to show everybody this example because most people don't understand how powerful hammers are. This is the euro currency. This is actually the all-time low after it was introduced for the very first time in 2000. If we notice that as the market was introduced, the low in 2000, this is October 2000, was formed by a hammer. In fact, the market came back and made a double bottom down here. Look at this price, 83. The market did what? It made a low by another hammer. Can you imagine? This is why using stop close onlys are so important. Can you imagine being long the market, placing a stop below the low, and then all of a sudden you got stopped out? Then notice what happens. Immediately, the market takes off without you. And we see what? Green candles, higher close than open, higher close than open, higher close than open, higher closing highs. That sign of a major reversal. That sequence of events after a hammer, by the way, shows up more times than not, even on 15 minute time periods. So you wanna pay attention to the hammer making a secondary low. I call the hammer a seek and destroy stop pattern because really what it's doing, it's going after people's stops below the market. You see a hammer followed by a doji, wait for what? A high close above the doji formations and we should see immediate results. And of course we do. Let me share with you a particular study, a back test study that was performed by Genesis. Now, um, this and, and most of the details here um, that are in this trading course, especially on these back tests, were done uh, specifically, and I hate to use the word, on the futures market, and here's why. Because the computer needed actual information from a centralized marketplace with actual trades rather than bid and ask trades through a Forex. So while we have various different Forex companies, you can have five different Forex companies and we might have five different prices all at the same time. And that's because everyone's going through a different interbank dealer. So we wanted to use a back test, something that was, uh, we could go back and say, okay, let's prove this. How does this work? And what we did is we used on the futures market based on a 15 minute interval during the US open outcry session, which starts from 720 
Central Standard Time until till 2 p.m. Whatever the high and the low was, we came up with this information. By the way, this is why I focus on not only the dojis, the hammers, but also shooting stars. On the euro currency, during that time and in this test, we discovered 22% of the time the low of the session was formed by the doji. 41% was formed by a hammer. So if I just focus on hammers and dojis near a pivot support numbers, and if that is assumed to be the low of the day, 64% of the time, that's the exact pattern that is formed that makes the low of the day. Now, it's kind of interesting if you follow this methodology that some people say that dojis form at tops and they're more reliable at tops, but according to this study, and this is a independent study formed by Genesis Software, um, Notice that the high is only 18%. It seems that we have more lows by 4% is formed by the doji at bottoms than it is at tops. That was a very interesting uh, study because most people, every different market has a different personality and every different market has different characteristics. And we're going to show that to you in just a minute. But I thought it was neat that 41% of the time a shooting star was formed by the high. So if I focus on just the, of course, the doji and the shooting star combined, 59% of the time that's what marks the high or top in the market. So that's why if we're at a pivot resistance and we've been long and we've been in a trade as we identified earlier, remember, and we showed you that market that the, uh, we had a, a nice little run up in the market and we see doji's form at pivot resistance, that generally might indicate it's the end of the run, it's the end of the trade, and the market's uh, hit its peak maximum gain for that time session. So therefore, as a short-term trader, especially in foreign currencies, I want to heighten my awareness to that, especially knowing this information, and possibly A, tighten stops, B, cut my position and take the money and run, and look for another trading opportunity tomorrow. Let's take a look at the yen. Wow, look at these numbers. 42% of the time, a doji was formed on the low, a hammer was formed on the low. So just by focusing on those two candle patterns, 88% of the time, based on a 15 minute back test study, the low was made by either a doji or a hammer. Let's take a look again. This statistical study reveals that only 35% of the time, a doji formed the high. We have more dojis forming bottoms than we have dojis forming tops. So that's kind of interesting and why I validated my statement and, 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 and hopefully it does for you that the high closed doji is a very powerful reversal pattern at bottoms, the high closed doji. We see that 7% difference between when dojis form at bottoms or tops. Now with a hammer, 48% is a shooting star pattern. So combined we have 83%. Those are staggering results and that's why I focus on just those two patterns. Let's take a look at the Canadian dollar. So this methodology's work in showing us how it works for various currencies. 40% doji low. Again, the doji top, 38%. So we're finding out that dojis form more often than not at bottoms rather than tops in the foreign currency markets. For a hammer, a hammer bottom, 45%. Combine that together, 85%. And we see market reversals formed off bottoms by just studying and following a doji or a hammer. So those are pretty staggering uh, bits of information and I hope you find that very valuable. Now, the British pound, worst of all, let's take a look at this. 13% um, of the time we have a doji uh, low, 34% uh, is a hammer low, and combined 46%. Now, one explanation is because of that London is the central uh, foreign currency uh, dealing marketplace in Europe, we could also say that possibly a lot of the activity that happens occurs at the night session in the, as during the London Open between Frankfurt and London Open and up until approximately 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the foreign currency. And we went through that and you will find those hours of trading uh, references and the peak uh, time periods for trading in a foreign currency in your course manual, by the way. Um, so it was interesting to note that uh, we really didn't see that many patterns develop for the pound, but we want to heighten our awareness because they actually do occur. 13% for a doji low, 17% for a doji high. So 34% it would be a hammer low, 36% a shooting star high. That's why we want to focus on different markets, different patterns, and how they relate to different markets. 
but I thought it would be interesting to see a computerized study, a back test study. Incidentally, that study dated back one year, 255 trading days on 15 minute intervals. That's a lot of studying and recent history. And I got news for you, friends. That in the last year, 2005, was one of the most volatile trading sessions in foreign currency history. So I think that with globalizations, uh, the globalized economies, with interest rates and interest rates on the rise across the spectrum of, of different uh, um, countries and central banks raising rates, I think it was kind of a, a neat study to see uh, how relevant technical analysis is in addition to how relevant it is with candle patterns. Now, here's the blast off, the benchmark, or what we call the pillars of strength, as I mentioned in my first book, The Complete Guide to Technical Trading Tactics. First off, the, it's commonly known as a marabuzo. It's a long, real body with little or no shadows at the bottom or top. It's also what we call a closed cut or a shaven head or a shaven bottom. Now, it's not hard to recognize this candle. It's right here. That is a true uh, benchmark or blast off or marabuzo. It's also a candle that conforms with engulfing because the real body engulfs many time periods real bodies as you see here. So it's an extremely strong pattern. Most people find it difficult to trade because they do one of two things. They either buy the breakout and the market regresses or returns and then they get scared out and they go short thinking it's a two bar reversal and it isn't. This is a special candle. It's to be treated differently and this may really improve your trading. It is a pullback. You wait for a pullback. Unlike the way we handle and we trade the high close and the low close doji, remember this candle you have to wait for a pullback at least to the midpoint of the Marabuzo. Wait for the midpoint for the pullback. It should act as support and you risk a close, a stop below the close of that candle. We'll show you many examples. So once again, here are the rules. A pillar candle, it's abnormally long range compared to past candles with little and it has little to no shadows. Um, again, little shadows at the bottom are normal. You see that occasionally in the Forex, so you have to have a little bit of flexibility because of that bid ask issue. Uh, bullish candles have a high occurrence of forming shaven bottoms. Um, bearish candles have a, a, a high occurrence of forming shaven tops, which means there's little to no wick or shadow at either end, okay? And so it shows that the market, in this case, at least for a bullish candle, it shows that it, it opens on the low and it closes on the high. There were buyers that came in the market right from the get-go and they were convinced that this market was going higher and they held on to long positions into the close. The market has a little bit of follow through. Possibly there's some profit taking and then there for those like me or now hopefully you who are notifying and seeing that that's an indication of bullish reversal momentum, you're going to wait to buy the midpoint or the pullback of that candle. So instead of buying the breakout, this is the one candle where you look for a pullback to get long. Okay, So pillars should hold 50% of its range or the midpoint and or the open as a significant support level. If the market corrects and if the market's to remain bullish and resume an uptrend, the open should be defended and you should use a stop close only. If the market closes below that open, hit the button, get out, you're out. So once again, let's review. Buy a pullback, buy a pullback near 50% of the pillar's range. Use a stop close only below the pillar's open. Now this is one of, again, a very lucrative pattern. It'll make you money if you trade them by these rules. Now, a couple other little nuances. If it engulfs or wraps around more than one prior time period's body, the more bullish the change in direction is. It's a high quality setup pattern. Remember, you want to take trades that go with the current bullish or bearish candle pattern. In a bullish Marabuzo or a blast off or benchmark or pillars, several names for them. Imagine this, the market's been in a downtrend. All of a sudden, you see this big, long, tall green candle. That shows that there's an immediate change in the market. You want to go with the current trend which is now up it was down it's now up look to buy the pullback the midpoint of that uh candle it's a you're lowering your risk as well because you know that you're not going to be buying the breakout you're going to be buying the pullback so therefore you know your risk is reduced greatly because it's between the midpoint down to the close of the open 
So the market closes below the open of the benchmark, that's your risk factor. You've reduced it by literally more than 50 to maybe 80% of a, of a given range of price breakout. And I'll show you defining what that means. By the way, once confirmation is made that the pattern is working, you gotta allow a little bit more time for the trade to mature and build momentum. Sometimes you see these benchmark candles, they break out, they pull back, and the market consolidates. As long as that midpoint to the open is holding, you're gonna have to just be patient and watch this trade materialize. What it's doing is consolidating, getting ready for the second wave to the upside. So that's really, in essence, what the benchmark is. Here's a great example. The market has taken off blasted through the high, possibly hit stops, the market. Now, some people may feel they want to get long or they're missing an opportunity. And can you imagine getting long here? The market pulls back to what? The midpoint of the candle. So the benchmark strategy stops just about what? Almost two pips above the highs of we have of a previous high over here. And so we're looking at the market truly as a definitive buying opportunity at this midpoint and we want to risk a stop close only below the open. We've only got this much risk rather than this much risk. We've reduced our risk factor by literally about 80%. From this high to a close below there, that is a tremendous move. You can measure that with your hand if you want. We've taken that risk factor and reduced it immensely. So that's where you want to look for the benchmark. Again, benchmarks show breakouts. But what happens is, if you imagine this red candle, think about it. The market closes strong, the market opens. At one point, it was a green candle because it was showing a high. So people would have bought that high. So from at here, if you go across our screen, would say, okay, we got in it. If you bought that breakout at 129.67, uh, and all of a sudden the market goes all the way down to 129.44. That's taking heat on the trade. You're probably at that point not feeling too good about that trade. So if you wait for the pullback of the benchmark, the breakout, look for the midpoint to buy. Use your stop below the open. Look how much risk you've effectively taken out of the market. You're risking from here to there. You might not be able to buy that low, but you certainly didn't buy that high. And therefore, that would normally be your risk. So what do you want? Do you want your risk to be in this zone here, down to your open? Or again, do you want it to be way up here? So when you see and identify those benchmark breakouts, look to do what? A, wait for the pullback, and then look to go long. At the midpoint, risk a stop close only below the open. Here's a great example. The market has this beautiful breakout of a sideways consolidation. The market breaks out. People look to go long, and all of a sudden they're not feeling too good. The market breaks all the way back down. In this example, we actually went below the open, as this green line indicates. But notice the market never closes below the open. In fact, let's look at this equal and opposite, or we call these chopstick patterns. See how the real body is red? The very next session is almost equal, but yet opposite of the real body. See that? We have an open here, closed down, the market opens and closes back up. If you took the average of that close and that close, where would you be? Right here at this blue line, wouldn't you? Isn't that amazing how that coincides and it's just a, a coincident factor? Equal and opposite. Bottom line, the open needed to be defended on a closing basis and it was. You took literally, literally no pressure on that. In fact, the market came back, tried to check that opening range and took off in blast off mode. Again, another breakout benchmark candle. What do we see? The midpoint tries to act as defense. It doesn't even quite get there, and the market continues its ascent. Once again, different market, different day. This is a five-minute period. Breakout market, breakout candle, benchmark. Why get long on the breakout? Wait for the midpoint to recheck. We do. Therefore, you're, you reduced your risk from buying on the high or the breakout to the uh, open, a stop close only. And again, wait for this market to give you confirmation of the upside. Here we have a couple other bonus features. We have a doji range. So the market doesn't even close below the doji's low. We have high close doji occurring here. That's helping a cause to, for a bullish uh, indication. And again, this market takes off. So it's a beautiful trade if you just give it time, 
to stay with the trade on a five minute basis. If getting in close to the midpoint of this gets you in around 136.15. Now you have a beautiful 40 pip gain on a market rather than looking at buying the high and selling the low and taking heat on a trade. They also work in downtrends. Midpoint should act as resistance. If the market's truly bearish and you see a long dark candle like this from a top pattern, the midpoint should act as resistance. And it does, as this example shows. And sometimes the market doesn't quite get to that midpoint. So instead of looking to sell in the hole, remember, if the market has resistance, instead of selling down here at these lows and taking more heat on the trade, wait for the pullback near the midpoint. Your risk is a stop close back above the open on the Brent breakdown benchmark or blast down candle. Now, incidentally, I just talked about chopstick patterns, equal and opposites. They're called chopsticks as well. Um, we also uh, consider them in Chinese. It's called the yin and the yang. The yin is a black or negative closed candle. And that would be what we give a negative assigned value to. Remember, if the market closes below the open, it's a negative assigned value. The black or red candle, as we would see on color charts, if it was color charts, it's red, is considered the yin. The yang is white or positive, And we give that a positive close value as the market closes above the open. Now, equal and opposites really occur with these false breakouts or key reversals. And we just saw one within the benchmark, by the way, that equal and opposite where the real bodies almost have equal distance but opposite reaction. And a lot of times they're in extremely, in foreign currency trading, we see them as a very powerful signal and they should be respected. Many times they form what we call tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms. In other words, they're uh, double tops and double bottoms, and they have equal and opposite real bodies. So you'll see a red and a green right next to each other. Or at the top, you'll see green and then red, and it'll form a tweezer top. Watch for engulfing and higher or lower closes, which adds significance to the setup. Such as this, as a tweezer top, number one, notice that we have the exact high, and we also have what we call equal yet opposite, but yet this is equal but yet greater. Because see what we have happen? The second candle, if you notice here, the second candle, our red candle, actually does what? Closes below the low, marginally, but closes below the low. So we have a tweezer top, this is an exact high, if I could draw that straight, it's an exact high. The real body here is oppositely matched and the market closes below the low. That's a very bearish sign. You want to do just as, take that as a sign as a low close uh, doji as you would for an LCD, but this would be just a lower closing low. So I call it a lower closing low pattern. Unfortunately, you need to sell on the close or the next open and your risk is a stop close only right here above stop close only above this high this level right there initially remember the good news is you just don't keep a stop close only all the time i want to see with this type of pattern i'm looking for immediate results and i think that's the definition that most traders don't know hey how long do i have to sit around a trade before i see results and how much heat do i take well real simple i don't want this to happen to you I don't want the very next candle or two to do one of these. Okay? That would be what? A shooting star pattern, correct? I don't want that to, to happen. Not to you, not to me, not to any of my clients or family members. Because I don't want you to become a shooting star. And that's why I use a stop close only. Sometimes we can see that market goes back and retest. And then again, you'll see the market just fall out of bed. I don't want to see that happen. So therefore, you need not worry about using a stop close only. If you get this type of pattern, we should see immediate results ensue. And that's the key essence of trading in the markets. If you know that you have a pattern that has a high frequency of results occurring, in other words, if you get a tweezer top, a low close doji top, and those are the patterns uh, you see immediate results. As soon as you get short, it goes down. You don't have to worry about that stop close only, do you? But you need a stop and you need a reason for the market to prove you're wrong. And what would that be? 
If this market closes above that high, I am wrong. I need to get out and take my loss. And that's why immediately I can say, gee, uh, I, I want to get out of this market. It doesn't make sense for me to be in it. Here's the British pound with an equal and opposite tweezer bottom or an equal and opposite greater than. And again, we see the chopstick pattern also called equal and opposite. And many times, again, as we say, we see these form tweezer bottoms or tweezer tops. Interestingly enough, notice that this green line is our pivot point projected support. There's a doji. And we see a finally a higher close of our doji and the market takes off. Interesting. However, how do we see and trade off of the tweezer bottom? You need to buy on the close or the open. This is a higher risk factor because you're going to have to place stops below your tweezer bottom. Now, because we have a doji here, here's something that you need to be a little bit flexible with. You can place a stop close only below that doji low, especially if you have a trigger to go long above the doji high. So we have a doji, a higher closing high. In fact, right here over the doji, right there in this example. But more importantly, we also closed above the tweezer top high. What's also neat about this is notice that the real body of our tweezer engulfed this whole time period. So again, that is an equal opposite, but yet it's also an engulfing pattern. That's why I keep things very simple and try to follow certain methodologies of my candlesticks. Instead of identifying what every candle pattern is, I can see that that was red, that was green, it had an equal and opposite effect. In fact, this had an equal and opposite but yet greater effect. We have a doji, high closed doji, I need to get long, where's my risk factor? The thought process that you now have is helping you to speed up the analytical process and will help eliminate the fear associated with hes that, that hesitation is associated with. I know mechanically this happens, get long, place stop here, enter order, hurry. Right? Very good. Again, here we have a tweezer bottom, not quite equal and opposite, but yet tweezer bottom. It's not a great chopstick pattern but it is a perfect tweezer bottom. So sometimes we see, again, it is an equal and opposite, is it not? It is not quite equal, but it's definitely opposite in color, almost in shape, but it definitely is a tweezer bottom. So you wanna pay attention to those tweezer bottoms. Once again, if you see that tweezer bottom, we wanna know when we can start looking to go long. By the way, notice what we have here, weekly and monthly support targets, wow. So we're at a confluence of support and pivot points, and we went over that in the first CD. So there's certain patterns that you can follow and focus on. Failed doji top, market takes off, market rallies. By the way, this is our uh, weekly resistance at 118.55. Uh, this was a, a low that actually occurred in the euro currency in, in 2005. One of the more prominent markets that we have occur is the... Um, again, sideways channel in Forex markets. We see the Forex market because of the different trading sessions and of course waiting for news and waiting for different bank uh, session hours or bankers to trade. And also there's certain things that, you know, banks and the Federal Reserve and central banks set overnight lending rates, broker loan rates. Money has to flow and there's certain demands and constraints on money supplies that are made. And so therefore, people are waiting, and that's what we get these pausing periods, and we see what we call a sideways channel develop. Some people find them very difficult and very challenging to trade through, but there's a few secrets and nuances that we can cover in this trading course that I think will help you out. Um, again, the, the key that to, to focus on is the longer a channel is, the higher the odds are that it's getting ready to move. And once it does, the bigger the potential breakout. If the breakout fails immediately, it is a good reversal trigger, rule number one. If you want to see immediate results with higher closing highs. So in essence, if we're in a sideways channel and the market finally breaks out, and my rule of thumb is I look for two closes above the channel, and then I want to see immediate results ensue and we should start to see immediate results and the market should, as it develops possibly another channel, we wanna see one, 
two closes above, by the way, another high close doji as we see here. But we see, as you see the doji right here, high close doji ensues. The market not only once, but twice stays above its breakout range. And we wanna see positive momentum develop immediately, not four days later. After a long sideways trend is developed, by the way, when you see a doji appear, heighten your awareness. Again, heighten your awareness when you see a doji in a sideways channel, especially when one has never appeared before. So you want to watch for a higher closing high above the doji high for a trigger to go long, and the opposite is true for a trigger to go short. So based on what we've been uh, talking about so far, let's take a look at this chart. We see that the market in the euro currency in the spot forex we see it in a downtrend it goes in an uptrend and then we're in a consolidation phase now here's the thing about trading that we don't know about and there's three phases a market goes through it goes from trend it can either reverse the trend it goes in consolidation we're either going to continue the current trend which in this case is up all right and so basically let's get our our pen out we're in an uptrend the market goes in consolidation I don't know if the market's going to resume the uptrend or reverse the uptrend, do we? But here we have a doji. And let's look. Where in our charts has a doji showed up before? Nowhere. So what we want to do is heighten our awareness to if a market closes above or closes below the doji low. If we get a close above the doji high, that's going to give me a clue that the market's going to go up. And I want to use a stop close only below that doji low. If the market closes below the doji low, I have a clue that the market's probably gonna go down and I wanna place a stop close only above the doji high. So that's what we're really uh, shooting for when we see uh, sideways channels. We're looking for clues as to what the market's gonna do. Another clue is, remember, we could look at the pivot point moving average. If we see, and just by looking at this, we have more green candles almost and we have higher assigned values. I would probably say since the market closes closer to the high, here it closes closer to the low, but then what do we have here? A higher green, a higher closing high. We see more higher closing highs and more green candles in this sideways channel, don't we? By just, we only have two down candles right here and right there, and the rest are green or up for the most part. So I would say that our moving average values are probably higher as well. So we have a higher slope in our moving average. So we got that going for us. We also want to look at this doji and see if the market closes above or below its high or low. Bang. A high close over that sideways channel, and this market takes off without any look back. Now, again, here we have a situation where this is a 15 minute time period, by the way, if you look here, and we have lots of doji. So I wanna pay attention to this breakout because there's a lot of indecision going on here. If this market breaks to the downside, I definitely wanna jump on the short side of this. If the market breaks to the upside, I wanna go long with this market. Where would I do that? Well, once again, as you can see here, if we have our doji highs and our, do our doji highs and our doji lows here, a close below, a low, we want to go on the short side, a close above, we want to go with an upside move. If the market breaks and closes above the doji high, we're also breaking and closing above that sideways channel. We can now really, instead of placing stops below this channel, we can do this. We can st tighten our stop up to a stop close below that doji low. How's that sound? That's a little bit more cleaner and a better uh, risk scenario because I'd hate to have my stop down here where probably a lot of other people have their stops and then they are introduced to this word called slippage. But let's take a look from what we've talked about so far. What do we want to look for? A close above a doji high to go long or a close below a doji low to go short, correct? Okay. So let me ask you and think to yourself, so far what we've talked about, sideways channels, dojis, the power of indecision, and the power of the, the reaffirmation of the market. With this last green candle that we see here, what do you want to do? Do you want to go long? So we'll ask, do you want to go long on the close or the next open? and then place a stop close only below that doji low. 
you can actually use that doji low, stop close only. Now you got to realize that you're getting long at 129.09 and we've been in a sideways channel for gosh close to one, two, three, four, five hours. So we're going to probably anticipate this breakout is going to do something and it should have a very large magnitude of a move. So with that said, keep in mind that what do we want to do? Buy here, our risk is all the way back down here. What are we talking? 129, no, let's round up. 129.10 to 128.85. We're talking 25 point risk, 25 pip risk in a foreign currency move. Well, I think we want to go long. Hopefully you said go long. So we're risking 25 pips using a two or three to one risk reward ratio. We should see at least a 50 to 75 pip gain. And from uh, our entry, which is 129.10 up to 129.62, that's 50 points. There's a two to one risk reward ratio right there. Bang. And what happens? Immediate results ensue. No heat on that trade. Our first lower closing low, we're out of the trade.